contenders auditioning on the stump and across the airwaves. I think we've seen over the last, um, well, decades that uh, who you pick as your vice president doesn't determine whether you're going to win a state or not. That is weird behavior, and I, I don't think you call it anything else. It, it is simply what we're observing. He's not just afraid to debate her because he knows she's going to kick his ass in the debate. Trump says he'll head back to Pennsylvania as the battleground travel heats up. Harris making a renewed push in Georgia with a Tuesday visit and both campaigns holding dueling events in Nevada. Recent polls show the race tightening with Harris beginning to close the gap with Trump as her favorability rises and the race enters a high drama home stretch. The Harris campaign also says that the vice president is heading into this home stretch with $200 million that she raised just in the week after Joe Biden withdrew from the race. Jake, we're also learning from sources that the Harris campaign plans to beef up its fundraising staff to try to capitalize on that momentum and build an infrastructure that is more in Harris's image than Biden's. Jake. All right, Kayla Tausche at the White House. Thanks so much. My panel joins me now to discuss. Well, I want to play this other moment. Uh, from former President Trump on Saturday. They say uh, he is not for democracy. I took a bullet for democracy. He didn't. I think talking about the assassination attempt is going to be say, something he, he, uh, he, 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 fr he frequently talks about. Don't yeah, you think? no, and I think we'll hear a, a lot more uh, about it. And it was a terrible thing for our democracy. And a, yeah. uh, any type of political violence is terrible for our democracy. Um, but when Paul Pelosi was savagely beaten in his house by someone who was targeting Nancy Pelosi because she was standing up for democracy, Donald Trump mocked them. When John McCain, who was literally shot down defending democracy, uh, Donald Trump mocked him. Uh, Donald Trump has a long history of mocking people who are standing up and fighting for democracy. A and frankly, Donald Trump is the only candidate in this race who incited an, an insurrection yeah. against those who were trying to uphold democracy. So we'll see how it holds. But yeah, I think he's going to talk about it a lot. Joan, it's been a, it's been a, I think it's fair to say, objectively, it's been a rocky start for J.D. Vance yep. as, the, as the running mate, even if even those who love him might acknowledge that. Uh, he's faced backlash for the childless, childless cat lady's comment, his abortion stance, pre previous criticisms of Trump face criticism. Here's the Wall Street Journal editorial board. Donald Trump's choice of 39-year-old J.D. Vance as his running mate was supposed to present the GOP ticket as modern and looking to the future. Instead, the campaign has found itself playing defense against Mr. Vance's censorious views. Did I pronounce that correctly? Close enough. Close enough. Uh, about women who don't have children. Um, what do you make of it all? I mean, it seemed as though it was a, it was a real a pick out, uh, born from the campaign feeling very confident uh, that Biden was, was going to be easily defeated. Do you think that Trump would pick J.D. Vance given today's givens? I don't get that vibe. Um, <laughs> of, uh, I, I, I can put that out there. Um, uh, yeah, look, I think it was a confidence pick. Uh, lots of people said it was Trump doubling down and all that. I think the problem is there were a lot of people in so-called MAGA world who thought because they liked Trump from the beginning and the people who didn't, like me, um, were proven wrong and Trump won and all that, that, that meant they actually had a really great grasp of politics. And it turns out they don't have a great grasp of politics either. And um, the, the truth of it is, is that, you know, Vance leans into the understanding that Trumpism, the point of Trumpism is the, is the insults, right? It's like, you can't just be for a good policy. You have to make sure that the, the left, that you're drinking the left's tears, right? You know, liberal tears are a delicious kind of thing. So his whole thing, about the context of the childless cat lady is about um, the child tax credit. Right. Child tax credit is wildly popular, right. and he has managed to frame it in a way to make it unpopular. Um, and that's because he doesn't have he, he doesn't have the freedom that a cult of personality like Trump has to sort of just be able to speak freely about these things because no one holds Trump accountable the way they hold normal politicians. When normal politicians try to imitate Trump, they're unpopular. People think, let me say it again, the polling that I've seen shows that uh, many Americans think that the vice president is not a serious person, as I said, that she's a bit of a ding-dong. And number two, that she is a, a member of the loon wing of the Democratic Party. She's a San Francisco Democrat. Um, she's, a, she's just like Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, except without the bartending experience. 
she is not mainstream. And I, the point I was trying to make was that by, by making her first policy position known on abortion, uh, the idea that uh, we should have a law that says you can have an abortion at any point, no questions asked, even up until the, the moment of birth, I think for most Americans is a, is a, a, a loon wing position. That's just my opinion, and All right. but that's uh, also what the just to be clear, no, no, you're 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 absolutely you're absolutely fair game to, to make it. I'm just wondering how you think that will resonate with women when you know she is called nasty and crazy and a ding dong and all and disrespectful between you and the president what what has been said about her i'm just wondering do you worry how that comes across and maybe you draw no distinction between a female candidate and a male and that's fair game but that this could 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 hurt you with with female voters with these type of comments well let me let me say it again uh she, sure. the vice president is a candidate for president of the united states I don't care about her gender, Neil. Maybe you do, but I don't. I don't care about her race. I care about her. Then why call her a ding dong? Then and, why call her and, a ding dong? And I'm telling you what the polling shows. I'm telling you what okay. the polling shows, right. and it does. And I'll be glad to sit down with you, and 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 walk yeah, you through please, the polls. Please, please do, because I, I never that, know when it's constructed to call people names. You know, grow and enlarge uh, in both parties, by the way, um, and. Uh, what do you say to the political folks, the operatives who, separate from inspiration, are concerned that Kamala will have to do something that is different than other officials? Um, she will be, for, in many states that have never had a black governor, a black woman governor or senator, um, she will have to get the, that state electorate comfortable with that statewide, and they've never had a, a practice session, if you will. But that's what democracy is about, is opening up the doors and letting everybody participate and contribute to make keeping our country strong. I mean, this is not, this is quintessential democracy test. And she is up to it because she's already shown that she can do the job. She's already shown that she knows how government should work and that she's on the side of the people. So as long as we keep focused in on what's in the public interest, I believe we will do, hmm. do well and protect our country. Uh, and on the politics, Trump had welcomed the first Biden debate. Uh, many people would say it worked out better for Trump than Biden. We all lived through that. Um, now, though, uh, he has not signaled the same willingness to debate her. What do you make of that? Fear. <laughs> Fear and cowardice, if you will. He's just a chicken, and you can quote me on that one. <laughs> he's just a quick chicken, and he's a bully. He picks on people he thinks he can get away with. You know, he can get away with it by picking on them, calling them names, calling them uh, the, uh, out of their names and just being silly. And, you know, things that nobody else would do, you know, a corrupt Joe. Like, what are you talking about? Hmm. You know, you're the one, you're the felon. Like, excuse me, you know, here's a felon calling somebody else a corrupt. I, who ever heard of such a thing? So I think that she's more than able to take him on, to speak truth to power, to speak truth to him, and, and, to, and to repulse any of those kinds of insults back at him. Terry's presidential bid and a convention chair. You guys have some experience. Thanks for being here. Just a little bit. Yeah. And guess what? What? When Kamala married the two women plaintiffs in San Francisco, I married the two men plaintiffs, uh, male plaintiffs, uh, on my last day of office. How about so that? So we did it like an hour difference. Wow. So California's back in the spotlight. You got to love that. Uh, the Democrats are ascendant. We know you love that because I just ticked off what you've done. Uh, what do you think has happened here in the last week? Um, and was it inevitable? Was it automatic? Or are we actually living through something pretty unusual? A tsunami of support uh, for Kamala Harris and her candidacy. Uh, they've, we've clinched the nomination. Uh, she's raised more than $200 million in that short period of time. President Obama and Michelle Obama have gotten behind her. Uh, she's on a wave, a tsunami. And I can tell you that uh, we're going to ride that wave all through the convention and through uh, November. Yeah. Uh, you could feel the energy in the campaign among women, among young people, among communities of color. And there's just this sense we can win this now. Yeah. And, you know, you can't judge people by how they look. I've always felt that way. And yet here you both are in your, in your blue, mm -hmm. your best you're Democrats. Democratic blues. We're Democrats. <laughs> uh, and, and Mr. Mayor, you, you mentioned the money. We also have 170 
1,000 new volunteers uh, and over 100,000 new voter registrants this week. And, and I've told viewers, 100,000 uh, new voters is a big number. The question is, will they really vote in 15 weeks? Uh, what do you see as the path here from a big first week to getting out 100 days? A lot of hard work. Uh, this isn't uh, a race for uh, thoroughbreds. It's a race for, with, for workhorses. And mm. I think you're going to see Kamala uh, at her best. I've known her before she was uh, San Francisco's district attorney. And I can tell you, in every office she's been in, she works her tail off. Uh, she's not afraid to roll up her sleeves and go at it. So, folks, everyone continues to boo Donald Trump off the national stage and off stages, period, right? Donald Trump is being hammered by everyone, and so is his messaging strategy. Remember, this Republican's messaging strategy strategy was like, oh, Donald Trump and the Republicans went through this life-changing event when the, the attempted takedown of Donald Trump happened by a registered Republican, mind you, but it's like, oh, everything is different now. We're going to have a message of unity. We're going to be nice. We're going to be constructive. And make no mistake, the Republican Party is a cult. So when you heard that Republican senator, dumb, dumb, whatever his name is, I'm not going to be nice, but I'm not going to let official uh senator dum dum from wherever the heck it is um said you know uh she's a bit of a ding dong and neil cavuto who one is one of the few somewhat journalists at fox if you can say that but even if he's not he's he's like you know if our mission is to elect republicans here at fox we're trying to help you be better evil politicians what he's trying to do there is boo down the donald trump strategy because the donald trump strategy right now is not to attack Harris based on her policy, not to suggest that he would do a better job because he has better policy, but to simply attack her because she dares to be a black person and a woman running against him. And that's why the attacks have been so full of hatred of women and of minorities. And not on a policy basis even, but on a personal attack. So it's not just that Harris is wrong. It's not just that she's misguided. It's not just that she has harmful policies. I disagree with all those claims, but you know, that's how you attack somebody in, in, in a po political debate. It's that we're going to go up on stage and we're going to call her dumb and stupid because she's black and because she's a woman and she's Indian as well, but because she's a woman of color and because she's uh, a, a woman, we're going to tear her down. And what everyone is saying, Democrats, independents, and even re like right-wing news hosts, we are booing you down because it ain't working.